Hello and welcome again to Flipped Harbor for Precalculus. In this video we're going to cover section 1.5 rectangular coordinates, graphs, and circles. Now a lot of this section is actually going to be review so I'm going to breeze past some of the simpler stuff so that we can spend some time on the more complicated ideas. Our objectives for this lesson are to find the distance between two points, find the midpoint of a line segment, graphing an equation, testing for symmetry, finding the intercepts of an equation. We're also going to look at how to write the standard form of the equation of a circle. And we're also going to want to graph a circle. Our topics include the distance and midpoint formulas, graphs for equations, intercepts, testing an equation for symmetry with respect to the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin. We want to be able to write the standard form of the equation of a circle. We want to be able to graph a circle by identifying the center and radius. And we want to be able to analyze the general form of the equation of a circle. So let's get started with this distance formula. The distance formula is really just an application of the Pythagorean theorem. Our distance d is the hypotenuse of a right triangle on the xy plane. The x and y distances, that is how far apart the two points are, horizontally and vertically are the legs of that right triangle. So really this is just a different way of looking at a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's go ahead and use our equation to find the distance between these two points. We plug into the equation x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, We simplify inside the parentheses and we square. And we find out that the distance is equal to the square root of 85. Now we're going to leave our answer like that. That's what we refer to as an exact value. As soon as you plug this into a calculator and get a decimal, it's now an approximation. We prefer the exact value. Sometimes we use approximations, but for the most part in this class, we're going to stick with that exact value. So just leave it the square root of 85. Now here's a different application of the distance equation. We want to find all the points that have an x-coordinate of 2 whose distance from the point negative 2, negative 1 is 5. In this problem, they're giving us our distance. We're not finding the distance d. We're going to plug in a value for d. We know that one point is negative 2, negative 1. No doubt there. The other point we know has an x-value of 2 but we're looking for the y value. And actually there's going to be two of them that we're finding. So let's start plugging this into our distance formula. We plug that 5 in for our distance. We're plugging 2 in for x1, x2, excuse me, and negative 2 in for x1. Our y2 is actually the variable y, and our y1 is the negative 1. Now what we need to do is start to solve this equation for the variable y. We're going to do that by starting to simplify and actually get rid of the square root. The way you get rid of the square root is you square both sides. 5 squared is 25. And on the right side of the equation, the square root's just gone. 2 minus a negative 2 is 4. We still have to square that. And y minus a negative 1 is y plus 1. So we're going to have to square that binomial. That means we're going to have to FOIL it. This is what we end up with. So the 4 squared is the 16. And when we FOIL the y plus 1, we get y squared plus 2y plus 1. Hopefully you remember the shortcut on how to square a binomial. Now, what we really have here is a quadratic that we need to solve for y. The way that we solve quadratics is we get all the terms to one side equaling 0. So what we need to do is actually combine the 25, the 16, and the 1 that's all the way at the end. What we end up with is y squared plus 2y minus 8 equals 0. Again, we've got a quadratic equaling 0. Our preferred method is to factor we can actually factor this quadratic into y plus 4 times y minus 2. Set both of those factors equal to 0, and we get y equals negative 4 
or y equals 2. Now both of these y values work and both of these y values go with the known x value and we have two solutions to our problem. We have 2 comma negative 4 and 2 comma 2. Both of these points have the x coordinate as 2 and they're both 5 units away from the known point negative 2 comma negative 1. Now our midpoint formula, again you should know what the midpoint formula is. This is just a refresher. The midpoint is really simply just the average of two values. We're adding our two x values and dividing by two. That's just a simple average. Adding our two y values and dividing by two. Again, that's just an average of the y values. Let's move on to talking about how to graph equations. We're going to get some more sophisticated methods later, but right now, if you're going to graph anything, you need to make some sort of table of x and y values. You need to plot those points and you're going to draw a line or a smooth curve through the points. If I don't see those points plotted, I know that you didn't do it right. You need to make sure that you're plotting the points and drawing the curve. Let's talk about finding intercepts. To find the x-intercepts of an equation, we plug 0 in for y in the equation and we solve for the x. To find the y-intercepts, we do the exact opposite. We plug 0 in for x and we solve for the y. So here we have an equation y squared minus x minus 4 equals 0. Let's find the intercepts for this equation. To find our x-intercept, we plug 0 in for y. We're left with negative x equals 4 or x equals negative 4. So we have a single x-intercept at x equals negative 4. To find our y-intercept, we plug 0 in for x and solve for the y. So we get y squared equals 4 or y equals plus or minus 2. When I took that square root, I have to keep both the plus 2 and the negative 2. So our y-intercepts are y equals plus or minus 2. Another way to write this would be to actually list them as points. An x-intercept would be negative 4 comma 0 because the y value is 0. Our y-intercepts would be 0 comma negative 2 and 0 comma 2. I really don't care how you list them. List them as an x equals, list them as a y equals, or list them as points. I don't really care. Make sure you're telling me which one's the x-intercept and which one's the y-intercept though. I do like them to be labeled. Notice I've got all my answers together boxed in in one big box, just like you should have on your homework. Let's talk about how to test an equation for symmetry. Now there's three different types of symmetry that we're going to talk about. Symmetry with respect to the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin. The way that we test for it, if we're looking for symmetry over the x-axis, in our equation we replace y with a negative y. If that negative ends up going away and we get the original equation back, then it's symmetric with the x-axis. Similarly, when we're trying to test for symmetry with the y-axis, we replace every x in the equation with a negative x. If it ends up being the exact same equation again, then it's symmetric with the y-axis. Now the origin, we have to do both of those. We have to replace x with a negative x and replace y with a negative y. If after all of our algebra, everything simplifies down and it looks like the exact same equation again, then it's symmetric with the origin. And yes, it's possible that something is symmetric with all three. Let's go ahead and take this equation again, y squared minus x minus 4 equals 0. We've tested it or checked for its intercepts. Now let's test it for symmetry. So my first test is going to be over the x-axis. I replace that y with a negative y. Now notice that that negative is inside getting squared. That's very important. You've got to know, understand that that negative y gets the exact same treatment as the regular y. So it's getting that square. 
Now it turns out because of the square, that negative goes away. Negative y squared is the same as y squared. So since our equation goes back to the way it was, this is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Let's test it for symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So now we leave the y alone and replace the x with a negative x. Now really the question now is, does this new negative go away? Not really. Yes, it becomes a plus x, but that's not the original equation. It's not y squared minus x minus 4. It's y squared plus x minus 4. That's not the original equation. So this equation is not symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Now let's test for symmetry over the origin. We're going to replace both the y and the x with the negative. And we would need all of these negatives to go away and return it to the original state. That first negative goes away just like it did before. The second one does not. So this equation is not symmetric with respect to the origin. All right, let's move on to talking about equations for circles. Now really, the first thing we want to talk about is what's referred to as the standard form for the equation of a circle. First of all, the definition for a circle is a set of points in the xy plane that are a fixed distance r from a fixed point h comma k. That r is what we call the radius, and that point is what we refer to as the center of the circle. So to put it all together in standard form, a circle looks like the quantity x minus h, that is the, a, the x value from the center, squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Now that's what we refer to as the standard form. If you get rid of the parentheses and move everything over to the left side of the equation, you get what's referred to as the general form of the equation, x squared plus y squared. Notice there's no numbers in front of those x squareds and y squared. The general form should have ones in front of the x squared and y squared. Plus ax plus by plus c equals zero. Now we prefer the standard form because it's easier to read off the center and the radius. But the general form quite often is how we have to have it in order to do other things mathematically with the circle. So let's go ahead and write the general form for the circle with a radius of 4 and the center 2, negative 3. Now what we need to do is go ahead and plug in our h value of 2, our k value that's negative 3, and our r value that's 4. Now notice, pretty simple in the first parentheses, x minus 2, but in the second set of parentheses, because it's y minus negative 3, I've changed it to a y plus 3, and you should do that as well. r is 4, so when we square it, we get a 16. So here we see the circle in general form. Again, in general form, it's very easy to see what the center is. It's very easy to see what the radius is. But this isn't the only form for a circle. If we want to take this from general form and put it into the other form that is standard form, then what we really need to do is foil out those two binomials. So when we foil out x minus 2 squared, we get x squared minus 4x plus 4. When we square out the binomial y plus 3, we get y squared plus 6y plus 9. Now we want to shuffle things around a little bit, and we want to bring the 16 over. So we're going to write x squared plus y squared minus 4x, so our b value, excuse me, our a value is a negative 4. That's OK. Plus 6y. And when we combine the 4 and the 9, and bring over the 16, we get a negative 3. So these two equations, general form and standard form, represent the exact same thing, the circle with a radius 4, center of 2, negative 3, but they look very, very different.
in a problem if I ask you what's the general form and the standard form for the circle. Make sure that you put them together and do one box around all of the answers. Let's take a look at how to graph a circle by identifying the center and the radius of a circle. Basically what we want to do is we want to put it in standard form because then it's easy to determine the center and the radius. We're going to accomplish the graphing by plotting the center and then we'll use the radius, a distance, to mark several points around the circle. Basically you're going to go left and right the appropriate amount from the center. You're going to go up and down from the center and then you're going to have enough points to hopefully draw the circle nicely. Now let's take this equation for a circle. It's in um, what we refer to as general form so it's easy to, excuse me, standard form. So it's easy to read off what the center is and it's easy to read off what the radius is even if the radius isn't exactly easy. Our center is negative 1 comma 1. Our radius is the square root of 2. Not exactly a nice number and we are going to have to use that decimal approximation to graph this but we got to do it. So we go ahead and mark our center, negative 1, 1. I want to see this when you're turning in your homework. If you've had to graph a circle, I should see that center point plotted. Now, from that center point, the circle is all the points that are the square root of 2 away from it. The square root of 2 is about 1.414, a little smaller than 1.5. So you need to mark at least the four points, 1.41 units up, 1.41 units, 1.414 units below the center, to the right, and to the left. And then our circle should go through those four points and it should look like a circle. There we go. Now yes, I've got the benefit of drawing this on the computer. Computers draw circles great, but do the best you can. I want to be able to see those five points on your paper too. That means that you graphed it correctly. Now, on your homework, you don't have to box in graphs. Remember, we've got very special rules for graphing though. We'll talk about those again later. Now, let's take a look at this circle. I know it's a circle. I've been doing this a long time. I can spot a circle a mile off. I know that it's a circle, one, because it came from this section, but two, because I see that x squared plus y squared, I know it's a circle. It's just not in that nice form. So how are we going to deal with it when it's not in that nice form? Well, let's move the 9 over. Get it out of the way. We'll deal with it later. Let's focus on the x squared and x term, the y squared and the y term. And what we're actually going to do, if you haven't spotted it yet, Get ready, brace yourselves. We're going to complete the square. So how do I complete the square on the x squared minus 6x? How do I complete the square on the y squared plus 2y? Remember, whenever you're completing a square, you're adding a number. So I've set up to complete the square. And what I always add is half of the number in front of the x term squared half of the number in front of the y term squared. Now I leave them squared like that for a reason. I'll explain it in a second. Over on the other side of the equation, I've made a change to the left side of the equation. So over on the right side of the equation, I have to make the exact same change. I added 9 in that first set of parentheses. So I add 9 to the right side. I added 1 inside the second parentheses. So I add 1 to the right side as well. Now, the reason I write it as 3 squared and 1 squared is for the next step. It reminds me what the binomial is right away. It's x minus, because that's the sign on the second term, 3, that number that's squared. That's why I write it like that, to remind me that it's x minus 3. My other binomial is y plus 1. So now I've changed it 
from this nasty form where I can't really read off the center and the radius of the circle easily to this form where I can read the radius and the center off very, very easily. My center is 3, negative 1, and my radius is 1. Take the square root of 1, you still get 1. So now I can graph this really, really easily. Mark my center, 3, negative 1. And now I'm going to mark my four points using my radius. Up one, down one, left one, right one. I've got my four points on my circle. And now I just need to draw a nice circle through all of them. Again, I want to see that center point plotted. I want to see at least those four points around the circle plotted on your graphs. If I can't tell that you plotted them, you didn't do it right. You don't have to box in graphs. Now, here's our homework for this section. Again, shouldn't be a big surprise. You know what the homework is ahead of time. I want to remind you that this homework includes graphing. Don't forget my crazy rules for graphing. You have to do those graphs on graph paper. You then cut them out and you glue them to your line paper with the work from the problem. Don't put all the graphs at the end you put your graph with the appropriate problem. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you in class and I'll see you online.